All right, so today I'm going to be working on another one of my custom builds. This time here I'm going to be using a SCX10 kit for uh, some of the parts I needed. Couldn't find everything randomly, so I figured I'd pick up the kit. And we're using my old AX10 Scorpion as a donor kit for the rest of the stuff I'm missing. So I'm being lazy. I'm using the pre-built axles. And my LRP brushless censored crawler ESC and motor combo. Alright, so here we're going to start with two of the halves with the output shafts. Get the two beveled gears in and the diff into the center. Put the straight uh, shafts in. Sorry, I'm going to adjust the light a little bit here. And just insert the lockouts with your bearings. Tighten everything up. Make sure you get a nice good fit, nothing grinds, and then you're ready to put your four-link piece on. And this center axle is about the only other thing on the kit that's non-standard. Very easy to build, as you can tell. Alright, so, got all our axles built. Just going to mock everything up here. So the center one has uh, both output shafts, and that's the rear axle. So, we're missing a couple inches on the back of the chassis. But we'll be able to get that all done up, hacking up another one. All right, so we get the tires off. Start uh, lining everything up. So we have the lower links, which are 98 millimeter. I have to look at that again. I think they are 98 millimeter. And the uh, upper link is going to be a. Uh, 106 millimeter but as I go I'm gonna have to play with that all ultimately you want is have your uh, drive shafts as lined up as possible stay away from those extreme angles all right so here's the upper link Just screw in a nut locks those in and now the drive shafts here are gonna have to be cut so we line it up real quick Notch it out with the exacto. Get the Dremel ready, and just clean that off. All right, nice fit. Do the same on the other side. Just clean it up. Make sure you have no plastic burrs. It should slide in uh, like the stock one did. All right, grub screw, and as always, thread lock for metal on metal. All right. So, put our tires back on. Make sure our spacing's right. Get no rubbing. Uh, drive shaft until we get everything locked up. Keeps popping out because the whole assembly twists sideways. All right. So, now we're just going to get the transmission set up. Four screws. Got that in there. Digging through the hardware. <laughs> Should have laid all the stuff out. All right, so that piece is done. Now, just going to use the links to mount it up to the chassis. All right, so. Two screws, one on each side for the upper links. And just a lock nut on the other side, make sure that doesn't back out. All right, so swapped out those green links at the bottom. They're a little bit long, so what I went with here are 71 millimeters. All right, so line that up. <laughs> digging a hardware pile again all right so final screw there and I'm getting ready to mount the shocks now so give this a little bit more shape so the shock spacer and then one long screw make sure you got that secure Alright, 
exact same on the other side. So shock, spacer, and another screw. Right, front axle, same as the rear. Install our upper links. And all this here will probably be changed as we go. We'll play around with the, uh, the links itself. Make sure that uh, we get good travel. But for now, this is a baseline. I found uh, an article about this on uh, Axial's website. So using his diameters as a rough draft. All right, so skip that and move our way to the lower links. Alright, so screw on both sides. Sometimes it's hard to try to get things lined up. Yeah, the weight of the rig on that. Alright, so this one was probably one of the harder ones. It kept twisting on me. Alright, so finally got that. Get the shocks installed here. Be able to see the stance. All right, so shock, spacer, and right into the shock hoops. Same on the uh, opposite side. All right, so pretty much assembled. And I'm going to start lining up the extension piece of the chassis. Quick cut of the Dremel. All right. Same thing for the opposite rail. All clean everything up, make sure there's no little burrs. Remove the center brace. Add the extension piece. I'm going to be using here is one screw and a nut to lock it up. I'm going to put a second hole in there afterwards to line up the plates. As you can see, they're a little bit twisted there. But for now, I want to get everything mocked up, lined up anyways. Reassemble with the brace. Hopefully with the brace, we might twist it back. We'll see. All right, so now the last set of shock hoops for the back. Same thing on the opposite side. And finally, the rear shocks. <laughs> Always digging for hardware. All right, same on the opposite side. And we're good to go. All right, so this is what we're going to be using to keep that back axle from swaying around. It's a pan hard. It's just a quick setup. Again, I got one on order. It just didn't arrive at time for the build. So... Instead of waiting, just build myself a little plate. And we're going to be using one of the, uh, I think it's 106. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Yes, 106 millimeter, but it's a uh, 30 uh, degree bend on it. To go from one side of the axle to the pan hard mount or pan hard bar mount. So right into the lockout. And one up top here. Gonna line ourselves up, keep it from swaying side to side. All right, so now servo, find the hardware, two screws at the top, two at the bottom, line up the servo horn, and we're done. So by adding those braces, did uh, tighten up that chassis, straighten out the uh, rear extension pieces anyways. All right, so panhard bar is working fine. It's keeping the back axle straight, still allowing for a lot of articulation. Be cutting out those chains after. Snow's gone now. Look a little bit more uniform. Other than unfortunately, I wasn't able to find the same uh, axial bead locks, but they are all six of them. 
TSL bloggers, super swampers. <clears throat> All right, so now to finish up the electronics. So, got the three channel spectrum, brush censored ESC. RP stuff is nice. It's all color coded so that way you don't have to change them out later or reverse them from your uh, transmitter. All right, sensor wire. All right, so I'm going to plug everything into the receiver. Tuck everything up front real quick. Throw a battery in there. Make sure everything binds nice and free. And we'll leave the body work for a uh, next video. <laughs> Make sure not to chew anything up in the spur gear. All right, so steering works fine. Move some of this stuff out of the way. <laughs> we have to put this thing on the scale. It's surprisingly heavy. <laughs> Beating up the receiver a little bit. All right. We got some throttle. Everything's moving fine. Quite a bit of pull on it. <laughs> Can't wait to test this out. Throw it in reverse. No clicking. We're good. So, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you like the build video and uh, should have uh, some running footage soon or at least the body work. So, thanks for watching. Please thumbs up and subscribe.